Hey, what is up guys, MKBHD here. There is all kinds of stuff at CES. Gadgets everywhere, tech in every direction to look at and play with, and lots of people. But amongst all the chaos, I can tell you that there is for sure at least a little bit of dope tech. So this is dope tech from CES 2016. First of all, there are not a whole lot of new smartphones at CES anymore. The most noteworthy new stuff I saw actually came from Huawei, who randomly showed up with a gold Nexus 6P, which is such a subtle gold, but I guess totally still gold and looks pretty good. And their new Huawei Mate S, which is a flagship phone with a six inch display and a classic Huawei skin on Android and supposedly a two day battery life. But let's be real, I gotta test that before I trust the number in any way. I did get to stop by Jaybird's booth to get a look at their new Bluetooth earbuds, which are the Jaybird Freedom and the X3. The X3 are a single color matte finish with the new colors and the Freedom are an even smaller, super lightweight bud where the earbud itself is super small and then there's a four hour battery in the controller that can be extended by another little wireless charger that holds four more hours. Either way, what's really dope about these is the adjustable sound. So Jaybird will have a My Sound app that you can install on your phone and there you can adjust the EQ to your liking. So if you want more bass, you can do that, more treble, whatever you like, and then you save it as a preset. Now that would normally be kind of lame, but you don't need the app anymore after you're done with this. So it's not happening through the app. You're actually modifying the firmware in the earbuds. So you can move them over and pair them to something else, your iPad, another phone, whatever you want, and they'll still sound like that preset you made. That is pretty sick. All right, so CES is often about the pixels, not gonna lie, but when I saw that even Nikon dropped a DSLR that shoots 4K video, I was kind of surprised. That's big for them. I kind of saw it as potential YouTube gear. Nikon D500 is a huge improvement for them in video. It shoots 4K video, has an articulating LCD on the back, audio input for a mic, HDMI out. I mean, it was nice. A great distraction, actually, from their way more expensive, but also kind of disappointing D5, which on paper should have been nice, you know, full frame and 4K video, but turns out it only shoots that 4K for up to three minutes and it doesn't even use the whole full frame. That is not dope tech. Oh, and Nikon also showed off a 4K 360 degree GoPro-like action camera complete with accessories and it kind of looks like they really do care about video again. So all these 4K cameras have been getting smaller and smaller and smaller then Panasonic shows up at this point with a 4K point and shoot, which reminded me of a certain Sony camera I've raved about, the RX100. So the Panasonic's point and shoot, they've got a viewfinder, an articulating LCD, a programmable ring around the lens, just like the RX100, and it shoots 4K video, and it's all in a body that's just slightly bigger than the RX100. So I'd say this has the potential to be just as good of a run and gun camera, especially if it doesn't overheat like the RX100 in 4K. And especially for people who need that zoom. Trust me, the lens is impressive. But 4K, 4K is everywhere. Everyone who makes a screen has a 4K TV at CES. And this is one of those years that again, only a few, just a few have an 8K TV. And not gonna lie, I saw one that didn't even look that good, but I think it was because they were playing like upscaled 1080p content or something. Like I literally don't think they had any 8K video to show. But the killer for me here was the LG 98 inch 8K TV. Jeez, this looks good. I mean, it's just pictures. It's just a slideshow, but it looks so good. Like many of the things at CES had no price tag, no release date. And that was actually fine for me here. The desire is real. The TV looked incredibly detailed. And then there was this. This would be the 8K TV of audio. The Sennheiser Orpheus is a $50,000 audio listening experience. Now I'm sure the difference in sound between this $50,000 pair of headphones and a $5,000 pair of headphones is probably not significant, but I can tell you the experience is. The thing is nested in a block of solid marble. When you turn it on, the tubes from the tube amp literally raise up from the case and start to glow as they warm up. The cables are like ropes. Um, the headphones themselves are pretty huge, but not actually all that heavy. And listening to them, even though I didn't get to pick the songs, was awesome. You can check out the TLD Today channel for an entire video just on trying to listen to these, trying the headphones on, a couple other YouTubers getting a first listen. Bottom line is, it was pretty awesome. My one word summary of the listening experience, clean, so clean. I call it the 8K TV of audio because let's be honest, there's gotta be the content to even take advantage of it, and that pretty much doesn't exist yet. But of course, there were all kinds of other TVs at CES, and they all had their own acronyms too. 4K, HDR, Super UHD 4K TV. 
Yeah, yeah, let's just say the best TV, in my opinion, was LG's G6. Super clean, modern design with all the electronics in the stand, very thin bezels, and an incredible 4K OLED image, of course. All sorts of other little nuggets of dope tech around the show floor showed up at CES. Audio-Technica dropped their ATH A990Z. Listen to them for about 30 seconds, but I need to, again, hear my own music on them to make my own judgment here. Uh, and everyone had tablets at the show. normal size tablets to massive borderline tv size tablets. That's an 18-inch Samsung tablet. And then super high-tech appliances. Trust me, this doesn't seem interesting, but as a person who's in the market for a refrigerator, these are hot. And Kodak is also making a Super 8 film camera, bringing back the process and the ability to shoot film. So that was pretty cool to see. DJI made a stealthy black version of the Inspire 1, which looks like an absolute badass. And there's also now a Phantom 3 that shoots 4K, so the drone game is clearly being stepped up. And Griffin showed up with one of my favorite things, a MagSafe USB Type-C charger. So you 12-inch MacBook users, you're probably thinking, damn, this is exactly what Apple should have included in the packaging. But yeah, Griffin went out and made it, and I couldn't be happier, it works great. Plus, you can add MagSafe to other USB-C devices that didn't even have it in the first place. And then there were the cars. The real ones and the concepts are both there. So the Ford GT, for example, looked awesome, obviously. And there were plenty of other great looking real cars all over the show floor. Chevy Bolt showed up as, in my opinion, the first actual rival to Tesla. See, we hear that in the headlines all the time, <clears throat> Faraday Future. Uh, but this is a real vehicle that's being made and at under 40,000 bucks, we'll have a 200 mile electric range. So that's pretty cool. Concept cars, I put a little bit less stock in, even if they are dope tech, like the crazy Mercedes concept self-driving car that was there. Uh, but the BMW i8 Spider was there and doorless and all looked pretty cool. And then there was the Faraday Future car. Uh, yeah, it was there. But you know, there you go. CES is always quite the experience. You don't really go to CES to see the gadget you're gonna buy in the store tomorrow. You go to CES to catch a glimpse of the future and sometimes you spot some dope tech along the way. Needless to say, I will be back. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.